The Attleboro Public Library and many community organizations are getting ready to put on the 2014 Big Read. This year's book is When the Emperor Was Divine by Julia Atsuke. The book tells the story of a Japanese family whose lives were uprooted and dramatically changed as they were forced into internment camps during World War II. There are many events being put on by community organizations that will explore the different themes presented in the book. AACS stopped by the Attleboro Public Library to find out more about this year's Big Read. Hi, I'm Joan Pilkington Smith, director of the Attleboro Public Library, and I'm one of the community partners of Attleboro's 1ABC. And we're here today to let you know about this year's Big Read. Attleboro's 1ABC stands for Attleboro's One Adventure, One Book, One Community. And it's a partnership of 11 agencies in town who've gotten together to promote cultural and literary events in town. Uh, we've done the Big Read, but we also did a series on Becoming American, and we do a lot of cu culturally enriching programs, um, and, and they take a lot of effort, so we tend to do one a year and have done it for about eight years now. The Big Read is a program that is financed by the National Endowment for the Arts in conjunction with Arts Midwest, who administers uh, the grant program. And we're just really pleased that this is our eighth year uh, working with the National Endowment for the Arts to bring a community-wide reading, not just literary, but a very culturally oriented program to the city of Attleboro. And this year we took a challenge and decided to do another of the, one of the brand new books. So this year we'll be reading When the Emperor Was Divine by Julie Otsuke. And it is a book that is about the uh, detainment of Japanese Americans during World War II. And the challenge for us was trying to make this something that we can relate to the Attleboro community. And it's turned out to be a, an excellent choice. People are interested in doing something with history. They're interested in the era. In fact, some of the items we have here today, and we'll be filling the display cases with items that people are dropping off to us. So we're pleased. We have some great programs lined up, uh, and we hope you'll join us. There are several themes that we're going to work on throughout the two months that we're doing a big read this year. Uh, we kicked off with baseball, which was done because baseball is such an American sport. It is our national pastime, and it is one of the activities that the men and boys uh, could relate to while they were being detained, many of them for two to three years. So there's a lot of documentary films and books which talk about baseball while being in the detainment camps. Another theme that we're, we've picked up on is there's a key that is extremely significant to one of the characters in the book. So we're going to be actually asking folks to bring to several locations in town, including the museum and the library, unusable keys. And we're going to uh, turn them in uh, for money to help fund programs for children at both the museum and the library. Our kickoff event, which we're looking really forward to, is being done by the Adler Area Bar Association at uh, Bristol Community College on Monday, September 22nd. And they're having panelists uh, come. A couple of folks are coming down from Boston. One's a 91-year-old gentleman who was 18 when he lived in, one, in two different in, uh, detainment camps. The other gentleman, Paul Watanabe, has uh, done a lot of documenting for actually the parks, National Park Services on the detainment camps. And then we'll have some more local people like Jack Spraga, president of BCC, who's a Rhodes Scholar in military history, Ron Churchill, who is a Vietnam War veteran, and then Max Volterra, a local lawyer whose family uh, had to leave Italy because of World War II. So that's something we're looking very much forward to. We have a lot of book discussions going on. We have a bonsai gardening uh, program. We have Margie Yamamoto from the New England Japanese American Citizens League coming to the library with a photo presentation of her family's life before, during, and after the detainment. The art museum's going to have an exquisite exhibit to end our events with a, a theme of keys and the key elements in your life. We have a six-week series on writing your own history based on key experiences in your lives that will be held at the library. Um, we have a Japanese cultural day that's coming with help from the Japanese consulate in Boston. So there are, are a tremendous number of events over the last few months to show both what the uh, experience was within the camps during World War II and the why of that experience, as well as cultural 
uh, experiences of Japanese culture. So it, it's, it's going to be a very beautiful presentation this year. The committee took a, a, a little bit different turn in that uh, we didn't have to meet as often once we wrote the grant, but different sponsoring agencies and partners have gotten involved in a lot of programs. Some new things this year, the Council on Aging Writers Group will be writing haiku. The school committee contacted us and they want to sponsor an AACS Live. Uh, discussion of the book. We have, as I said, the Bar Association very involved. The museum is like the heart and soul of our group. MIM always comes out with a great idea from, from our books and gives us an opportunity to expand on that. The Literacy Center helped organize the baseball. They're doing a couple book discussions uh, with students and with the general public. Um, the Y helped with baseball, as did the rec center. So we've had a really good rapport. We have a volunteer who's doing an anime uh, presentation at BCC for us. So we've had a lot of folks come out of the woodwork. The jewelry outlet just approached us Saturday with a potential program on pearls, which come from Japan. Um, so we've really gotten to the point where people really come to us and want to expand this even more. So it's part of the reason it's two months this year is that there's just so many people who want to take a part in it. We actually have our own website. It's attleboroughs1abc.org and you can find a listing of the events there. Most of the agencies involved also include the events on their website. Uh, the books are going out into the community this week. There are a lot of businesses in downtown Attleboro, Pleasant Street, and in South Attleboro who uh, put them out. We give them a few copies to give away. We'll be at the Lee's Pond event and at the Farmer's Market in October also to give away books. And at all of the events we have, we usually have a few left that we can give out as well. We give out a thousand copies of the book that the NEA gives us the money to buy. So. If you've never tried this experience, even if you don't read the book first, this is really a, a brilliant job this year by the partners. It's the events they're doing, there's no way you can walk away and not have one feeling, have a feeling one way or the other uh, of having sensed from this book what it must have been like. She's done a wonderful job of making you feel like you're there. So join us.